Local Tia is a great integration for getting your Tuya based devices under local control in Home Assistant. But adding devices can sometimes take extra effort, especially if the device is not supported out of the box. So in this video, I'm going to use this light from Decala to show you how I approach adding these devices to this integration. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs. My name is Jeff. Decala was kind enough to send their Arkenstone lamp to me so I could do this video. They of course didn't have any influence over the content of this video, but since this is a Tuya based device, I thought it would be a good opportunity to showcase how you could add this device and other Tuya based devices to Home Assistant using local Tuya. I'll tell you more about this lamp from Decala a little later in the video, but first let's talk about Tuya and Home Assistant. There are two main ways of adding Tuya devices to Home Assistant. The first and perhaps the easiest is using the official Tuya integration, which uses the Tuya cloud to connect and communicate to your devices. But local Tuya is a Home Assistant community store integration that allows you to communicate with these devices over your local network. Configuring devices for this integration though can be a bit confusing, and if you have a device that's not completely supported, it may take a little extra work. But don't worry, if I can do it, you can do it. The rest of this video is going to go like this. We're going to start by getting access to the Tuya API. We need this access so that we can get the local key for our devices. Next, we're going to install the local Tuya integration in Home Assistant. Then we'll go through adding the device to Home Assistant in that integration. This is the step in which we're going to need that local key from the Tuya API. Then I'm going to show you my method for figuring out the device attributes and options that don't come predefined by the Tuya device platform in this integration. And then once we have a working device in Home Assistant, I'll give you some ideas on how this Decala lamp could fit into your smart home. But before we go any further, let's talk about what's not going to be in this video. This video assumes that you already have a device set up in the Tuya or the Smart Life app that you want to get into Home Assistant. Also, like I mentioned before, the local Tuya integration is part of the Home Assistant Community Store, or Hacks. So this video assumes that you already have Hacks set up in your Home Assistant instance. Okay, now that we have it planned out, let's get to work. To get any Tuya-based device working with Home Assistant, whether through the official integration or this local Tuya one, we're going to need to have an account so that we can get some information from the API. If you don't already have one set up, there are a couple of guides out there that you could follow to walk you through the process. I followed the one linked in the local Tuya integration documentation, but this one over on the Home Assistant website has screenshots and might be a little easier to follow. Either way, they all start out with you going to iot.tuya.com. At the iot.tuya website, you'll want to click sign up and fill out your details. Once you have this filled out, you're going to hit next. You're going to be asked to verify your email by entering the code Tuya sent you. Once you're verified, you'll be asked to log in with your brand new credentials. Hopefully you remembered your password. On the account type setting screen, choose individual developer. Then on the left rail, click cloud, then development. Here we need to click create cloud project. I give it a name of home assistant and skip the description. Industry and development method, choose smart home. And for data center, choose the one in your region. Then click create. On the next screen, we need to authorize the API services. Here you want to make sure that you have IoT core, authorization, and smart home scene. If you don't see them here, you can find them in the list on the left. Then you click the little arrow here next to that list and add them on the right. Once you're happy with your services, click Authorize. After that, you'll be presented with your API client ID and client secret. For what we're going to be doing in this video, you're not going to need these. But they're here just in case you do in the future. After that, you'll want to link your Tuya app or your Smart Life app to this cloud project. To do that, we're going to click on Devices. Then we're going to click on the Link to Your App Account. Then add App Account on the far right. You'll get a QR code. Open the Tuya app on your phone and hit the Scan button and read this code. This will link the devices in your Tuya account to this project. You can add both the Tuya app and the Smart Life app to this cloud project. 
but you can't add your devices to multiple cloud projects. So to continue this, I need to flip over to my personal account. And under devices, you should see the list of devices you have in your Tuya app. If you do, then you're ready for the next step. Okay, now that we have our API access set up, we need to get the local Tuya integration installed in Home Assistant. If you head over to Home Assistant integrations and search for Tuya, all you will see is the official Tuya one. If you install this, you'll be using the cloud. It's not a bad choice, and in some ways it's easier, but we're looking for local Tuya. And for that, we need to head to the Home Assistant Community Store, or Hacks. If you don't already have Hacks installed, you'll find a link to a video I did in the description that walks you through setting that up. It's pretty easy to set up, and it does come in handy. Once you're at the integration page in Hacks, click on Explore and Download Integrations. Search for Local Tuya. Click on it, and then you want to click Download. Once that's done, you'll need to restart Home Assistant. When your system is back up, we can now head to the Home Assistant Integration panel, click Add Integration, and then search for Local Tuya. And if you don't see it, then try clearing your browser cache. Important Hacks safety tip, after installing a Hacks integration, it's always good to clear your browser cache. So let's install this integration. And if all goes well, you'll get a device discovery window that should list any Tuya devices you have on your local network. Okay, before we get this lamp set up in Home Assistant, I wanna take a moment and talk about the Decala Arkenstone lamp. This lamp works great as a colorful bedside lamp and alarm clock, showing you the current time on the front. It has two built-in alarm clocks, allowing you to set a wake-up time for work days and a different one for weekends. And you could choose from 16 different sounds to wake you up. But unlike most bedside alarm clocks, this one is also a lamp that boasts 16 million solid colors and 10 gradient colors. And if you would rather be gradually pulled from your slumber with light, you could use the Dawn Simulator. But don't think of this lamp as just an alarm clock. It can also be a sleep aid to help you get to sleep and it has voice control through both Amazon Echo and Google Home. This lamp retails for around $90, and if you're looking for a smart alarm clock, this one works pretty well. Since it's Tuya based, I added it to the Tuya app without any issues, and from there, you can set your alarms and control the effects of this lamp. The effects are divided between three different switches, which is nice because you can set the parameters for each of the effects, then switching between them only requires turning on and off switches. For example, just flip on the ambi light and choose the gradient. Now every time you turn that switch on, that gradient will be the one it uses. Or flip on the color light and pick a color. This is my second Decala lamp, and I think they make really good lamps for a kid's bedroom. The sleep aid function gives you the ability to play a sound over a period of time, decreasing in volume, which is perfect for those kids and adults that seem to have trouble getting to sleep. And since we can add this device to Home Assistant, we can tie that sleep function to our good night routine. Speaking of which, let's get this added to Home Assistant. Okay, so on the device discovery screen, you should see a list of all your Tuya devices on your network. To verify which one we need, you can either use your network router to locate the IP address, or you can use the Tuya API. Once your Tuya app or your Smart Life apps are connected to your cloud project, you of course should be able to see a list of all your devices and we can use the device ID here to identify which one we want in the Home Assistant integration. Once you pick the device you want, we'll need to give it a name. And you'll need the local key. This is like a pin code for the device that allows this integration to communicate locally. Without it, you're not going to be able to get this to work with this integration. The easiest way to get that local key is using the Tuya API. On your list of devices, copy the device ID for the device you're adding. Then we're going to head to the API Explorer, which is over in the left rail. Then under General Device Management, we're going to choose Get Device Information. Paste in your device ID and hit Submit Request. And you should get back lots of information, including the local key. We're going to copy it, and then let's head back to Home Assistant. We're going to paste in the local key and hit Submit. Now you need to pick the platform for the device you're adding. For this particular device, I'm going to pick Light and hit Submit. What you're looking at is a list of all the attributes that have been defined for a light in this Tuya integration. 
and the boxes contain either the location of the configuration option in the device's configuration or context like options or a scale for that option. The first box called ID is the main entity for the device and you'll typically want to point this to the main switch for the device you're adding. The light integration assumes that for this device type, that configuration option is labeled ID2. So I'm gonna leave it as is for now because I really don't know. And don't forget to fill out friendly name, which this integration isn't going to let you continue without it. We have brightness, color mode, and so on. And if we click on color, this is what we get. As you can see, we have quite a few of these options. These are all the sensors, switches, and configuration options available to use through the local device. The problem is, this is all gibberish to me. I mean, I figure if it's true or false, it's probably a switch. But the rest of these I really don't know. So I'm going to show you how I approach this problem. First, let's just hit submit. And since we set the friendly name for this device to bedside lamp, here we are. And if we open the Tuya app, we can flip this switch and see that it turns on the color light switch in our Tuya app, which tells me that ID2 in the configuration points to the color light switch. But we don't have any other options in Home Assistant, so let's try to add them. Okay, I suspect this is going to be gibberish to a lot of people. Heck, the first time I saw this, I noped right out of there and opted to stick with the official cloud-based integration. And if you say you're out, that's fine too. For everyone else, let's see how far down the rabbit hole we can go. One thing that might help is knowing exactly what those IDs in the list were, so we can jump back into the Tuya API and use the API Explorer to give us a little more information. For that, we're going to head over to the Smart Home Management in the left rail. We're going to pick Get Device Specifications. We're going to paste in the device ID and hit Submit Request. What you get back is a list of supported features. DP underscore ID is the ID we saw in that list in Home Assistant and code is the name. And in most cases, this code should tell you what it is in the app. For example, ID 5 is volume, and it lists here that its minimum value is 5 and its max is 100. ID 11 is evidently color data and the color information is in JSON. But there were more options in that list in Home Assistant than there are here, and I'm going to show you how to figure all those out. Before we leave this screen though, let's copy this and save it somewhere for reference just in case, so we don't have to come back here. Okay, since I know that ID2 points to the color switch, this time I call it color light and I hit submit. Next, I uncheck the don't add any more devices and choose sensor. Sensor is always a good choice if you're not sure what the attribute ID for the device is or does. Then I just start creating sensors for each one of these attributes. I name it sensor and then the number based on the attribute ID so I have an easy reference. Then I go through and add as many as I can. If its value is either true or false, I add it as a switch and use the attribute ID as part of the name so I know which attribute it is. And because you can only use each of these once, so that helps me keep track of which ones I've already added. And once you have most if not all of these built out for your device, it should look something like this. Now comes the fun. Open your Tuya app, pull up your device, and start flipping switches. You should see one of your sensors or switches in Home Assistant change. If you do, make note of the ID and what it was called in the Tuya app. Looks like this sensor 101 is brightness. It also looks like the scale for brightness is 0 to 1000. And I think I saw a couple of other options that were set to 1000, so let's add those to this as well. To add a new attribute, you need to add the local T integration again, but this time the friendly name for that device is listed, which makes it easy to identify. This time I'm going to add the IDs we think are brightness as numbers. Choose the first one and set the scale 0 to 1000, then click next. And once both are added, leave the don't add any more devices box checked and hit submit. And then we can start testing again. This switch 104 appears to be the nightlight. Okay, so if I adjust the brightness in the Tui app, Look at that, my bright two changes. Okay, I know, this is a slow process, and depending on how many attributes your device has, it can take some time. For example, it took me about 45 minutes to add a recent robot vacuum using this method, but it does give you a pretty straightforward way of tracing which configuration options are tied to which options in the app. 
I suggest writing them down so you can refer to them in the next step, which is now that we've identified some of our major attributes and features, let's rename them in our device in Home Assistant. For this, we're going to hit configure and then click on this last option. This will pull up some checkboxes and we're going to uncheck any of these that we now know the names for. Then hit submit. Since we figured out that the color light brightness was ID 101, let's update that here. In the brightness option, choose ID 101, then hit submit. Now we can check it. Open up the device in the Tuya app. Now we can turn it on and it appears we can control the brightness. Nice. Okay, now we need to add each one of these other attributes in as well. So again, click add integration, choose local Tuya, choose the device we've been working on and then start adding them. In this case, we can use light platform for the three light functions of this device. Here, we're going to use ID 104, which we identified as the night light option. And for brightness, we're going to pick the correct brightness ID that we wrote down that goes with that light option. For switches like sleep aid and alarm in this device, choose switch and then link the ID. For things like volume, use number and be sure to set the scale. And when you're done, it should look something like this. Once you've gotten this far, you just need to verify that everything is working as you expect. Open up the Home Assistant app and the Tuya app and start flipping switches. What you're looking for is to make sure that the corresponding switch or option changes in the other platform. For this particular light, I haven't got the color picker working yet. The colored data is in JSON and I haven't figured out how to get Home Assistant to understand that data format in this particular integration. But I suspect there probably is a way, it's just going to take a little bit more time. And although we weren't able to get all of the options into Home Assistant, we were able to get quite a few of them. For things like configuring the alarm settings, like setting the time and picking a sound, we're going to need to use the Tuya app. But alarm times don't often change for me daily. And since we have two alarm clock options in this lamp, we can use Home Assistant to determine which one should be on based on other criteria. Anyway, if you have a Tuya based device that you wanna get into Home Assistant and use it locally, hopefully this video gave you some ideas on how you can work through that problem especially when the device isn't supported out of the box. Because even though we are limited in what we can do with this lamp through this integration, we can do some pretty cool stuff, I think. For example, if this lamp was your bedside alarm clock, you could build an automation in Home Assistant to turn on your alarm on your work days and turn it off on your non-work days, so you don't have to worry about having to remember to do that right before bed. Better yet, you could have an automation in Home Assistant that turns off the alarm if you get up prior to the alarm going off, and Home Assistant sees that based on either bed sensors or other activity in your house. That way you don't have to run back to your bedroom to turn off your alarm when it goes off while you're drinking coffee. Or if you're like me and you have a good night routine you kick off when your kid is in bed, then you can have Home Assistant turn on the sleep aid function at that time as part of that routine. Again, a huge thanks to Decala for sending me this light so I could do this video. If you're looking for a smart bedside alarm clock or a sleep aid to use in your kid's room or just an interesting light to have in your house, check out Decala's line of products, including this Arkenstone lamp. There's a link to their website in the description below. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you wanna support Slacker Labs and the mission to help you automate the boring stuff, you can find affiliate links as well as links to buy me a coffee and the official Slacker Labs t-shirt store in the description of this video. Or you can just let me know that you found value in this video by hitting that like button. And consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. As always, Thanks for taking time out of your smart home projects to watch mine. Until next time, automate the boring stuff.